It's a bunch of crazy stories written by the Brothers Grimm. And now you're gonna learn all about them, listening to the Brothers Grimm. Students and scholars, friends and relations, welcome to the Brothers Dim podcast, where we discuss the oft-times silly, but sometimes very silly, stories written down by the Brothers Grimm in the early 1800s. My name is Phil. Yeah, my name is Mike. We have a humdinger of a story for you. Story number 26, Little Red Cap, one of the big guns in the Grim universe, I should say. It's a biggie. It is a biggie. Surprisingly, this is going to be a, a bit of a shorter episode because I think we can get 24 minutes out of a lot of the stories which haven't had anyone look at them or certainly I haven't looked at them. Maybe we maybe we can we can we can go along, but I, I think that it'll be fairly quick. I think everyone knows is well aware of this story. Yeah, I, I agree. This one, there wasn't a lot of meat there that especially that wasn't new. All right. In any case, though, Mike, how are you doing? OK, I have a, a new favorite podcast besides ours, of course. Yes. Um, so we recently had Halloween season and I went looking for spooky stuff. And I came across a podcast that had been recommended to me before by Spotify, but I had not checked it out, but it was called Old Gods of Appalachia. Okay. And my God, it is delicious. It is eldritch horror. It's an anthology style. The narration and the writing is just wonderful. Top notch. Yeah. Loving it. Otherwise, I'm good. How about yourself? I'm doing fine. It's been cold here, though, as we are well past Samhain. We are now in the winter months. That is true. Jamie and I, though, have still been going on walks. And, oh, good. And uh, what should we find ourselves wearing, in addition to coats and pants and things? Would it be red hats? It's not red hats, but it is knit caps. Hmm. Well, Which if, brings it us... if it ain't velvet, I don't know. <laughs> this is one of those ones where I feel like you, you hear this story before you even really... It's not like I, I never even considered it sort of in the, the fairy tale pantheon with Cinderella and all that. It's just sort of like a just a story that everybody uh, knows. A literal meme, as it were. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, something that gets passed down somewhat genetically. <laughs> I agree. I don't remember hearing the story for the first time. Surely it must have happened. Right. But, but yes, Little Red Cap, not mind you, though, not Little Red Riding Hood. Though we can discuss that in a little bit. But without further ado, Mike, would you please bring us through the plot of Story 26, Little Red Cap? My pleasure. Now, stop me. You might have heard this one before. <laughs> but there's a special little girl. She's very well loved, especially by her grandmother. This grandmother once gave her a red velvet cap, and this girl loved it so much she wore it everywhere. Hence why she was often nicknamed Little Red Cap. Makes sense. Fact, we don't actually know her real name, which I feel like would have been a trip if she was just like, my name is Sabrina, but you can call yeah. me Red Cap. <laughs> which is not the a... Only thing, the only thing anyone calls me is by what I'm wearing. This one, <laughs> this one affectation that I, that I figured out at age eight. And if I stop wearing it, then nobody's going to know who I am. Anyway, loves to wear this hat. Wears it all the time. They call her Little Red Cap. One day, her mom sends her to go visit her grandmother with uh, cake and wine because the grandmother's been ill. And if there's anything I like when I'm ill, it's cake and wine. She uh, gives her strict instructions. Walk politely. Don't wander off the path. And don't break the wine. That's the most important. <laughs> when you get there, call good morning uh, when you get to her house and don't go snooping. Which I thought would be followed up later and wasn't at all. Just mm -hmm. don't go snooping. Which makes me wonder about the grandmother. So the, the grandmother lives a uh, half a league away, which I, I looked it up. It's a mile and a half. A league is three miles ish and it's into the woods. Uh, so she, she starts out and shortly after getting into the woods, uh, she's approached by a wolf. And despite all the warnings that her mother has given her, she never actually said, Oh, by the way, wolves are, are bad. They're bad dudes. So the, the wolf inquires what the, what the kid's up to. And she tells him all about where she's going very specifically what she's doing, where she's going and where the grandmother's house is. Oh, you must know it. It's that one under the three, the three trees with the this and the that. Sure. Um, he says, you know, he says to himself, oh, this one would be good to eat, but the grandmother would probably be pretty good too. I got to figure something out here. So he walks with her mm -hmm. for a while. Then eventually sort of 
distracts her with the flowers off to the side of the path and says, oh, aren't those flowers beautiful? She agrees. They, she thinks they're gorgeous. So she, of course, wanders off the path. Wolf runs straight to the grandmother's house. He knocks on the door. She calls out. He answers, pretending to be a little red, uh, little red cap. Uh, she invites him in. He goes straight to the bed and eats her. Just not even, not even a how do you do. He then puts <laughs> on her clothes and cap, draws the curtains and lays down. Now, if, if you had never heard the story before, which, which is almost impossible. Like I was, I was trying to read this as a first time reader and he like just runs in, eats her and then puts on her clothes. It starts to get a little weird. Uh, I mean, yeah. Even things like Cinderella with all, with all of that, all the trappings yeah. there yeah. kind of end up being a little bit weird. Yeah, I agree. It felt like little shades of Buffalo Bill. <laughs> uh, so meanwhile, a uh, little red cap has uh, finished picking flowers, realizes that she has gotten distracted and gotten off the path. So she heads off, heads off to the grandmother's house. Uh, she finds the door open when she gets there, calls out good morning, but no answer. Finds the grandmother in bed. She's, you know, with the whole rigmarole. Oh, what big ears you have. What, you know, <laughs> the better to hear you with. What big eyes you have, the better to see you with. What large hands you have, which is typically missing from versions that I knew. Uh, the better to hug you with. And then what terrible big mouth you have. And mm-hmm. the better to eat you with and eats her. At this point, the wolf is full and sleepy and passes out, as wolves are wont to do. When they eat kids, yeah. Or grandmothers, or both. Or, or people. I, yep. I, yeah, we've seen or them goats. eat kids and they get sleepy. Yep, goats too. So wolf is full and sleepy and passes out. A passing hunter hears snoring coming from the old lady's house and says to himself, I'm going to go see if that snoring old lady wants anything. <laughs> um, he goes in and he finds the wolf. And this apparently this is a wolf he's been he's been tracking for a while. He's about to shoot it and then realizes that it may have eaten the grandmother. So instead of shooting it, he cuts it open with scissors. Out pops Little Red Cap and then the grandmother. Little Red Cap promptly gathers stones, fill the wolf's belly up. He wakes up, but the stones are too heavy and he collapses and dies. There's much rejoicing and taxidermy. And then there's this addendum that uh, typically you don't find. Sometime later, Little Red Cap is doing the exact same thing. She's bringing cake to her grandmother and she is again approached by a wolf. Uh, but this time she ignores the wolf, doesn't get off the path, and goes straight on her way to the grandmother's house. Gets there, tells the grandmother about it. They bar the door and they wait because they know the wolf's going to come. Wolf comes knocking, pretends to be a little red cap. They ignore it. He circles around the house a bit and then goes up on the roof to wait for a little red cap to leave so he can pounce and, and eat her up. Grandmother has a wonderful idea. She had boiled some sausages recently, so she sends little red cap out with the sausage water. <laughs> to pour into the trough out front. The wolf tries to stretch to reach it, but he slips and falls into the trough and drowns. Little Red Cap is once again happy and goes home. The end. Ah, sausage water. Mm, good old sausage water. Saves the day once again. <laughs> so, yes, Little Red Cap or, or or Little Red Riding Hood, although this actually makes more sense to me. It does. Because Little Red Riding Hood didn't ride anywhere. Yeah, and I, I could never, when I was a kid, figure out what a riding hood is. Just like a cape with a hood on it, right? Yeah. Or maybe not. Do you have a moral? Oh, the moral they're driving at is obey your elders, don't get off the beaten path, stay on task, and you won't come to harm. But I feel like there's got to be a more fun one buried in there. I mean, I think you, you nailed it, although... It seems to me, and and you talked about this a little bit earlier, learning from your mistakes because they give us the sequel. That's true. Or whatever. They they tack on that extra story at the end. And and they did learn their lessons. They they learned them and the the wolf they, they didn't fall for the tricks again and came up with some cunning plans. They're like, We know this is the wolf. He's up on the roof. He's gonna eat us again. No huntsman around this time. We can't we can't rely on that always happening. <laughs> There's that, and then also, uh, if you're sick, if you got a little bit of a cough, maybe a little touch of the cancer, a little cake and wine ought to <laughs> <laughs> clear it right day. up. <laughs> you're going to feel better. I think yeah. that you will, generally. You know what's funny is, hearing it as a kid, I, I thought the the hunter was a woodcutter, and I was waiting for a woodcutter to come in and save the day, and I was going to be like, oh, yeah, finally a woodcutter gets the gets the star attraction. But no, it was a hunter. Jacob and Willem aren't going to make a <laughs> hero out of a out of a woodcutter, but they could I seem to recall it also being a a woodcutter. And I seem to recall that because he went in with an axe. And right. That's how he frees grandma and little red cap. 
Yeah. So it was it was the French version in which he was a woodcutter. Oh my god. So I mean, we can maybe, get into the French version in a little bit if you want. Oh, you have more on the French version? I have so much on Ooh, the French version. I can't wait. Okay. So yeah, I mean, as we talked about the I believe Germany was under some sort of French rule at this time. So perhaps uh it being a hunter instead of a woodcutter was a little jab at the at the les français. <laughs> maybe. Well, we can get into that. So so the French version, Charles Perrault, written in 1697 and had the first seemingly printed version of the tale, sort of. But it's that's kind of where we get the b- bigger broad strokes. I think the actual name, Little Red Riding Hood, although presumably in French, and <clears throat> with the red headpiece. But there's two big differences that I noticed. One, the wolf at one point says when little red riding hood is in there says put the food down and get into bed with me little red riding hood takes her clothes off and hops into bed at which point the wolf just eats her because that's and the other part is there i don't think that there is a there's nothing in the the french version she just she's just dead they're like well anyways that's what you get wow that that's more grims than grims it's wicked grim and yeah and it's it's very weird i i found the uh when i was reading that and especially the Little Red Riding Hood takes off her clothes and gets into no. bed with the wolf. That just makes it that much more visceral and horrifying. Oh, my God. It's a terrible. I mean, I, the the lesson there, the moral there in the French one from, like I said, from 1697 or whatever, it was like, listen to your parents or you're I mean, you're going to get raped. Yeah, but that seems to be what the story <laughs> is. So one thing I had read is that Perrault had been. I, it, I whatever the 16th, 1600s version of an interview is, um, had been asked about the moral at the end of the tale. And he had said, from this story, one learns that children, especially young lasses, pretty, courteous, and well-bred, do very wrong to listen to strangers. And it is not an unheard thing if the wolf is thereby provided with his dinner. I say wolf, for all wolves are not of the same sort. There is one kind with an amenable disposition, neither noisy nor hateful nor angry, but tame, obliging, and gentle, following the young maids into the streets, even into their homes. Alas, who does not know that these gentle wolves are of all are of all such creatures the most dangerous? Yeah. Hey there, little red riding hood. Let me walk with you for a while. <laughs> don't don't worry about me, you know. I'm fine. We can take our clothes off. We don't have to do anything though. Yeah, just just uh how about you uh how about you take off that hood and and everything else. <laughs> it was just funny. I'd never thought of it previously. I just literally thought of it as a wolf, but it's clearly uh, a stand-in for, for roguish men or, or probably men in general. The yeah, French version, know. definitely. I, with, with Grimm, though, there. I mean, because there's the evil kind of wolf, then there's the actual huntsman. And we're kind of getting into some weird gender roles with this one, too, because it, the girl is naive. She doesn't know what what, what danger even is grandma's frail and old mom just lets this kid go so maybe is a little bit naive herself although you know somewhere in the middle and and then bad things happen because of all that if it weren't for the huntsman she would have ended up like in the pro story which is dead right story type arn thompson type 333 little red riding hood done a million times not a ton of variation but uh, although i and i think at this point i mean it's been done so many times like it's almost a joke now the idea of the wolf and not even sheep's clothing the wolf and grandma's clothing yeah yeah it's 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 a trope yeah couple a couple things i thought weird or, or funny okay so the the passing hunter hears snoring coming from the old lady's house <laughs> and his immediate thought is oh i'm gonna go see if she needs anything yeah and i'm just not, gonna i'm gonna check I'm in on not, i'm just gonna let her sleep <laughs> one thing that was confusing okay the so the second wolf in the continuation the the sequel okay he comes to the door pretending to be little red riding hood or little red cap whoever and is foiled well they're not foiled but it ignored and then goes up on the roof to wait for little red cap to leave yeah but like presenting himself as little red cap when 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 at the door made me at led, led me to believe that he doesn't know if she's there he might not have known right away and then and then she's just like, go away, you you stupid wolf. Oh, no, they, they, they were silent. Your, oh, yeah. <laughs> what this wolf means is some shock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, at one point, the, the, it also says the grandmother saw what was in his thoughts, which is probably just like grandmother He's a lusty. Figured, figured what was going to happen. 
Yeah. Uh, but also sounds almost witchy. I am. Mean, I mean, she might be a witch. She lives in a cabin way out in the middle yeah, of the way woods. in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, speaking of moral, I think this this is a moral we've talked about before. It seems like wolves will never learn if they just chew their food. Everything's going to be fine. They're so hungry. Just stop swallowing shit whole. Yeah. And you you might not end up with a <laughs> belly full of rocks. Maybe not. No, maybe not. It's hard for me to find anything kind of super funny that hasn't been uh, right. Yeah, done, I mean, there's there's not even that many funny beats in it either. I and you know, and there's there's certain things you can you can if you really start looking, you can find stuff. And that was what I started doing, where I'm just like, okay, well, could this be a story about resurrection? About her becoming a woman, you know, was she reborn in Smarter Fort or she hit puberty? Maybe that's why she's wearing the red cap. And then you you stop being as naive, you know, with these men around and stuff. Mm. And I, I realized I'm like, no, I'm just looking for shit. Yeah. And maybe there was some of that there. I, I don't know what Jacob and Wilhelm were planning with this, although it's very possible they were just like, listen to your mother. Because they took out the 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 more lascivious parts that Perot had left right, Perot had yeah. left in you know with the just you get naked and yeah, this man, this wolf hell, gentleman's yeah. not is gonna is gonna have his you know have fun with you or whatever yeah the addendum at the end do we know if that was the Grimm brothers or if that came from elsewhere I have no idea I think so it was the, the Grimm brothers uh, based on what what I had read that they, yeah, I mean Perot's is definitely it, it ended with her dying she's just dead the wolf ate yeah. her, she's dead. Yeah. That's the, the end of that story. The he chewed is, his is food. Sh- yeah, the addendum is to show that she learned. Yeah. Um, and, and is wiser for it. Which is great. And it doesn't happen hardly at all. It, it made the moral so much easier to see, I think. It is interesting that given how dark and gruesome many of the Grimm's versions are, that they toned this one down and gave it a happy ending. The the stories are grim because of the nerfed stories that came later, the Disneyfied stories that came later, right? But right. maybe they were the <laughs> people were reading like, oh, geez, wow, these are some weak sauce stories. Like, I know these stories. <laughs> like, uh, where's the where's where's the real dark shit? And then Jacob and Wilhelm were like, no, we don't we don't need this. <laughs> <laughs> this one needs are, a, a chair. We are Germans. We are not monsters. <laughs> <laughs> this needs a chicken leg <laughs> and a glass mountain. I think that a man wearing women's clothes was enough for them. They, they said, no, we don't need <laughs> nothing crazy. She just we thought she was naked. It's the craziest thing. I have a pitch, sort of. Hit me. So Red Cap has been done in pretty much every era, I think. The only thing I could even think of is like kind of the most modern, just just make it as mo- as modern as possible. And in that regard, and forgive me if I start describing something that already exists, but you could do an online kind of psychological drama, not even psychological, but the wolf in this case being a hacker robs the grandma or one of these guys from one of the call centers who call me 10 times a day asking, telling me their name is Michael. Anyways, they steal money from poor old grandma, but then the scammers try again. Only this time red is there. And Mike, I'm going to hire you as my consultant on this because I don't know if this is Hollywood that I'm thinking of or you so like tracing calls and shit is any of that real like uh can, yeah I think can I trace my like so if a scammer called me and got on my computer or whatever could I turn it around with hacking <laughs> and track where they are by phone number or IP address you know where where you're looking at the screen hacking is like a video game right yeah. <laughs> I know that's not the case uh, totes Yeah, if someone wanted to steal my money, but I was savvy, I could let them hop on my computer, but then find out where they are. Could like, could I do that? I would assume that they are going through seven proxies, obfuscation, (laughs) yeah, obfuscation (laughs) methods, such that it's going to dead end for you. Uh, But it's not impossible. I mean, you could have a a stupid hacker. Anyway, okay, so let's say though we we could we could trace this this guy. So then, Red Riding Hood does that. Finds and actually goes over to wherever these people are, and Team America murders them all with an AR-15. How about an axe <laughs> or an axe? Yeah, oh, that, you know that's a really good, really you know, just switch it up. Yeah, it takes takes an axe like that movie Taken with Liam Neeson, mm. except that it's a young girl for the entire last third of the movie is just on the killing spree. 
I and then the final set of skills, <laughs> <laughs> a set of hacking skills. And the final big bad is he ends up being a werewolf. <laughs> I love it. And the moon, the full moon. There it is. Yeah, the <laughs> full moon comes out and he just actually wolfs out. And then there's a big fight and uh, red cap wins. Just like a like a complete left turn reveal in the last five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> And you Perfect. can do like the full the full change. That's it. I think there there I I, I cracked it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one one addendum I had was that they they fleece the grandmother, no pun intended, uh, for a bunch of money, and then they try to hack, they try to fish Red, yeah. posing as the grandmother. Oh, in the grandmother's clothes. I get it. No, that's really smart. Yeah, and thus thus is the plot of Hackers Two. <laughs> electric boogaloo <laughs> anyways that brings us to the end of story number 26 little red cap sleep tight and we will see you next time see you next time <laughs>